Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on for a lot of reasons. You know, look. Uh, got a lot of feedback the other day and, you know, Colette Stefan is joining me here today. I wanted to talk about it. Colette Marie Stefan, but for me, she's Colette. Uh, the bottom line is we're going to talk about stuff because yes, I did talk about the eclipse. I did talk about the fact that, uh, Jupiter is in retrograde, my planet, but it's also aligned with Sagittarius. And yes, you all sent me a lot of things about astrologically Mercury and retrograde. Here's the message. Life goes on. It does. But Colette is going to take us through how life can go on abundantly. Today, I get to talk to my friend, my colleague, about when your physical environment supports you, life is just easier in like a gazillion million ways. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Colette. Of course, you know her as the host of The Truth is Funny. You also may know much more about her in the energy work that she does, her book, The Truth is Funny. But you also may know her about the phenomenal way that she engages people, whether it's through her workshops, her webinars, or simply her fabulous radio show. What you may not know is that, and, and she'll give me an update on this, For some time now, she has been working on these amazing, amazing, beautiful energy cards. And she's going to tell you a little bit about them. Actually, I hope a lot about them. And the reason I'm excited about this is because I remember the first time I think I saw the first one. And I I grabbed right onto it. And I think maybe, Colette, you had only been doing a couple Now, the deck, the deck, and I have the deck at a certain point in time. But today, there's a flow of energy we need to talk about. We need to talk about it in a way so that we do not put our energy and argue for our limitations because maybe your ruling planet, like mine, Jupiter, is in retrograde or our network's ruling planet, planet Mercury, is in retrograde. <laughs> because here's the deal. People like Colette and me, sometimes we need to slow down. But that <laughs> doesn't mean we stop. It just means we catch our breath. Colette, it's great to have you. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much, Pat. It's my pleasure to be on the show. And I, I just love working with you. It's always fun. And I had a radio show this morning. And um, it was, you know, basically around the same topic. Uh, we just, you know, on yesterday we started our solar eclipse. I'm also a Sag. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Poor Linda. <laughs> I... <laughs> but, you know, thank goodness for Linda, that triple Virgo that she is, right? Yeah. Uh, the good news is she's so close to the cusp. She's got that triple Virgo, but that Libra energy that Jessica has. But, you know, here we are, right? And what does that mean to someone like you and me? First of all, this is really our year. And a lot of people don't know that Jupiter has come home to Sagittarius, came home uh, December or November of 18, stays there for a year. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) The massive energy of it. Right. (laughs) This is available to everybody, Mm -hmm. right? But when we talk about this, we have to talk about your work and we have to talk about the quantum field and energy of our lives, don't we? Well, for me, um, I, I started this um, deck, uh, uh, oh, it was 12 years ago. 
and I have been working on it diligently. Um, the, you know, at first I thought I was maybe, I phoned my mentor at the time because I had gone for certification so I could take, um, so that I could become a, a practitioner and, and be teaching seminars and uh, with a method. And what happened is when I got that certification, I phoned her and I said, I'm certifiable, that's the good news. The bad news is, I don't think in a good way because I've got a big giant uh, dragon s sitting here in my living room. <laughs> that was the first one. She told me, oh, we're from the Intergalactic Federation of Light and you are going to paint 64 of us. I had no idea that that was because of the 64 tetrahedron grid at the time. I was like, uh, yeah, okay, I hope they're little paintings. Well, they're not. <laughs> this one back here is a reproduction. Um, I use local talent here in the Okanagan, and um, he does beautiful, beautiful reproductions of my paintings. And uh, so those are available for purchase. But when I started this deck, um, I, I, you know, I said to this to my mentor, and she said, well, you're strong to it. <laughs> and we both laughed. <laughs> And here I am, <laughs> 12 years later. And I think at the time when I first brought them out, I had 25 cards. And I realized I had all these beautiful maestros in the deck, these beautiful dragons, and they're imprinted with um, crystal energies. They're imprinted with all the energetic shifting I do as I paint them. And I crank the music on, and I get in touch with the collective influence, and I work on, okay, what's this one for? And so as... Um, the deck came about, it turns out there's 28 maestros and those would be like the shamans of the deck. And uh, I went to Peru and I did ceremony there. And um, that's when I realized that, oh, the, the, the cards that are um, vertical in my deck, those are the maestros. The cards that are horizontal in my deck, those ones mean that there's a change in direction that needs to be taken. And so, um, <laughs> Those cards, <laughs> there's 12 astrological cards, which I call the aspects of life. Because if we look at the horoscope and the wheel, those yeah. 12 aspects, actually, in the beginning, it's the infant, I am. And then we go to the, the toddler. And, then we, and, and so we can go around that. And when we get all the way back around to Pisces, we're, you know, then we start over again. And so the Sagittarian energy is about adventure and traveling and, you know, being kind of um, out there. And, and uh, uh, Sagittarians have a tendency to be maybe obsessed with knowledge. Um, oh, you, think, <laughs> you think, you know, uh, it, it's like the old uh, adage, or actually, you know, if Linda's your best friend, it's like, uh, hello, are you actually going to do anything with that? Or are you going to stare at it to death? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but with this deck, with, the reason I brought these, like I, I, they're beautiful paintings and um, I love doing them. I've been doing them for 12 years and the longest one took me three years. That was courage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's from the solar plexus. Yeah. And um, I'm, as I said, I, I'm working on appreciation right now. And it just so happens, like now that I, I have the foundation of my program, I'll just show you. Yes, please. This is, this is um, one of the, the first manual from my Call to Dance program. And inside, wow. um, I've incorporated the cards along with diagrams that people can color in. Wow. And we use these. Um, there's the... The, paint, the picture of being caught between a rock and a hard place, <laughs> um, between heaven and hell. We can make life heaven or hell anywhere we go. Have you noticed that, Pat? Yeah. No, no. You think, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, and, and not only that, we can create it when we're sleeping. Yes. We don't even our, have to be. <laughs> our subconscious and unconscious, subconscious. mind. I know. are constantly on HSN, chit chat, chit chat. And our conscious mind doesn't necessarily recognize that that's what's going on. So this the, the, the energy correcting cards, there's two parts to my um, tales from the vector because I've been working on it for 12 years and I brought the first cards out um, three years ago. What I've done now is, you know, every year I bring out another round. And so 
those cards I've been selling individually. You can get them on Tales from the Vector and check yeah. them out there, or you can go to the Truth is Funny and also dot com and also check them out there. But um, these cards now, um, they actually, the, the energy correcting cards have been out there for three years and I'm getting some very phenomenal results from them. T tell us about that because I want to hear for people that may be listening because this, the audience is growing, you know, across the board, but I want folks to understand what we're talking about because not everybody has experienced you like I have. Okay. Or like other people that tune into your show. I okay. mean, they don't know that, you know, that, that people have worked with you and energy correcting for Lyme disease. But now we're talking about these cards. And so what I get is fascinated by them every time I touch them. Mm -hmm. I, That's don't what have, I, found. I don't because have your at, knowledge. At, at, at the beginning, I didn't even mention the dragons for about five years. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I, was like, you know, I remember. I I've taught seminars um, back and forth for 10 years now, for a decade or 15 years now. Uh, I've given hundreds of free talks. I do that on the Friday night before I have a seminar. My new program is called Call to Dance because um, we are all being called right now. And a lot of people are trying to march through life to get to the goal. And I say, let's dance through it. <laughs> and <clears throat> so I was called 15 years ago into this work. And what I do is I identify and eliminate hidden energetic blocks that prohibit people from accessing their authentic desires. And I love to share information about how I do it. So that's what I've been doing. And I have worked um, extensively back and forth across Canada in, with all sorts of practitioners. I've been in Egypt teaching seminars in Spain. I've been in, um, uh, all, uh, uh, in Germany, England. So... Uh, and now I'm back in Kelowna here, and we happen to have a dragon here, Ogo Pogo, <laughs> right here in Kelowna. And uh, she was just seen out at Skaha Lake. Um, there's a video on uh, the news that they have, but there's always a, is she really out there or not? She's the water dragon out here. Right. Uh, yeah, Ogo Pogo. And so, but I, I call her synchronicity because what I found after traveling all around the world is that I wanted to live in Kelowna. And so that's, great place. It's one of the most beautiful places. I know. In the world. I know. Yeah. I, know. I just love it here. And like there's lakes and they're clean and, you know, it's just so Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we would say it's so Pacific Northwest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I think I think what you're talking about too is and let and let's talk about this for a minute because when when you first talked with me about it before you talked with the world about the cards um there was something about them that could not be explained so there are two parts to this that people may not know we're talking about the cards and now we're talking about integrating the cards and mm -hmm. the corrected value of the cards but i don't know that people know that like behind you mm -hmm. like right behind your head mm -hmm. that is a painting yes okay and the painting is painted in a certain way. Yes. Um, this painting was the second one. This is sexuality. Um, yep. he, all the women love him. <laughs> we go to the holistic fair and uh, <laughs> they'll say, whoa, we really like that one. The men like him too. Yeah, no kidding. Um, he's, he's from, what I did is I wrote my book. Um, I'm just going to show you. The, the yes. It's funny. So this is a, uh, um, I, I think it was published about four years ago now. It's been out there now for around that time. And um, I, I found out a long time ago when I was um, doing ads for my uh, seminars and that, or my business cards, you can imprint things with your energy. And so that's why these dragon cards work is because they, they're not just about feng shui. Um, they actually say um, they are, a quantum arrangement. Yes. Because it's not just about uh, feng shui for people who are interested in feng shui or who know about it. Um, these cards have like, they come from the center of your home. And so when you, when you, when we talk about our physical environment, what I mean by that is the home you live in. 
the, um, the country you live in, the city you live in, um, all of these, uh, the, where you go to work, your vehicle, all of these have an ability to strengthen our physical intelligence, which allows us to be in homeostasis in our body. Homeostasis is a state of perfection in the body. And if we get out of our own way, our body knows exactly what to do to heal. Right. Right. And most, most weaknesses, well, 99.99% of physical pain in the body is actually uh, at a deeper level, on, at root cause, rarely ever physical, like almost never. And so a lot of the issues that come up is emotional or psychological, mental. Um, it can be a spiritual issue, a soul issue. So the cards just speed this up for me. What I found is that if I, if I imprinted my cards with the energy and my intention was my business card, put it on the fridge. And as you walk by, it'll energetically remind you to shift yourself so that whatever is bothering you in that moment is gone. And the problem with so many people's homes, well, for one thing, a lot of them are busy driving back and forth to work so that they can have a home that they barely <laughs> <That's> right, <exactly. laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Uh, like, uh, uh, who came up with that crazy idea? Yeah, yeah. Like, so, you know, all these people doing this. And then when you walk into your home, you don't realize it. You know, that that gift that someone gave you and you love the person, <laughs> but you really don't like it, but you don't you keep it every you time. Totally you, understand exactly what you're talking about. Yes. Every time you walk by that, what happens is your energy drops. Every single time. It's like uh, for some people too, the procrastination people um, for decluttering. <laughs> Quite often procrastination. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let's just be clear about procrastination because I got a text message from somebody about this the other day. Any of these planets that go into retrograde, that has nothing to do with having that as an excuse to procrastinate. <laughs> I just Come want to on, clear yeah. that up. And by the way, we're going to do some clearing right now. 1-800-930-2819. Yeah. Retrograde procrastination. No, that's not it. 1-800-930-2819. Let's get the stuff cleared out now. And I hope we got, we're going to do some cards. Okay. So let me ask you about this. I got, I'm going to use a specific thing to get some help. Mm hmm so I'm playing table tennis and I'm back into, you know, taking great care of myself, all of that. And I love to play. It's really mental for me, right? Like paddling. Mm -hmm. Paddling is like a mental thing, isn't mm -hmm. it? Well, it's a, see what people don't understand is a lot of people want to meditate, meditate, <laughs> meditate, sit and meditate. Um, for me, um, I'm not saying that that's a, um, you know, going in no, is not. always a good thing. I just like yeah. to do it really, really quick, like in a second. Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm out, um, out on the lake and I'm on a paddleboard and I'm like out there enjoying and moving my body, I am at my most powerful then because the universe likes to see action. I'm doing something that I absolutely love to do. And it, it's, you know, and one thing that also I love about paddleboarding is you're always having to look into the distance and also be knowledgeable about what's happening close up. Yeah. And, and this is extremely important. And so Table you're just, tennis too. Well, your reflexes have to be really, really fast. And with table tennis, I mean, you just won. We were joking about this, but I want to see your trophy because you didn't really show it. <laughs> I want to take a look here. There is my trophy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And it, it is joy because this is something that you love to do. See, for me, you know, what somebody said to me, they said, Oh, did you win that for your age group? What? I, I know. <laughs> How insulting. <laughs> well, no, I understand. I understand why. Um, <laughs> but I said, well, no, it's just the group that I'm rated in. And I said, you know, I said, but there are tournaments that you can enter for your age group. As a matter of fact, I also have a gold medal for that, my age group in the mm -hmm. state of Washington. But what you're talking about is so important because we don't know that when we're participating in what you're doing, what I'm doing, everything else fades away. And well, I want to help yeah, people The answer today. for that is like, fades away. 
Yeah. And what what I teach people is how you know we have a uh, if we're we are like a, a computer, and this computer is binary. It only has two choices. You're either in alignment or you're out of alignment with with energy. And so the hard drive is your central nervous system in your spine. And I like to plug into the heart <laughs> to get to where, because to really attract your authentic desires, I, can, I have energetically shifted people and all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, I was talking on my show this morning, like it's really interesting because the problem is quite often that um, the subconscious mind, which is formed by the time we're seven, that mind um, is what we usually fall back on when we get triggered or we're under stress. And that's really just our parents, grandparents, teachers, um, our cultural experiences, and up to the age of seven. So when people tend to get upset, like, let's say they get in an argument with their spouse, they'll go back to how it was when they were little and their parents argued. Just doing exactly. There's a card I have in the deck here. I don't You're know. You're going to hold it up. And for those of you out see. there, we are clearing energy right now. 1-800-930-2819. Say hi to Benny. 1-800-930-2819. Or go to transformationtalkradio.com. For those of you that are like, I cannot call in, Pat. Uh, type your question, your comment there. What do you need to clear out? But what do you want the flow of energy to support? So let's see the card. Okay, so I couldn't find that one, but I found this is the what card. What one that popped, popped up though? What's this, the one that popped up? This is Ooh. otherworldly desires. This oh. is the favorite card. This is the orgasm card. <laughs> I love that card. So people put this in their lingerie drawers, <laughs> along with Mr. Sexuality here. <laughs> and um Wow. It usually, uh, it, it, it has worked for many, many people. I have a chapter in my book here, which is called Hard Men Are Good to Find. I know. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Oh, no. oh, my God. Oh, listen, here's the deal. One, one, I want to get some answers, and I want to show people how this works. So here's the story. I didn't know I was going to tell you this. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, so, I, you know, here I am going on my way. And honestly, you know the healing journey I've been on. And I'm like, like way okay, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, my right knee blows up to the size of a soccer ball. Totally soccer ball. And so I go into my doctor and I say to my doctor, okay, look at this knee. And let's just cut to the short version. Of course, they drain out two giant vials of fluid. Uh, send it out for testing. And, you know, I'm the kind of person that you better be able to explain to me the numbers on the test. Mm -hmm. and everything's got to match. But they don't really have an answer. You know, their answer is, oh, it looks good. There's nothing going on in there. I'm like, well, wait a minute. There's something wrong between this test and my last blood work. So can't. And I find myself that I, I have to explain this to, to the doctors. But here I am. So, so, <laughs> it's not. It's not but here so I am, uncommon. metaphorically, playing a sport that requires my knees to be in good shape. And I've got minimally four vials of fluid in there, and they take out two. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. Um, but let's talk about that because I want to get to the point where you said. Certain parts of the body represent certain things. So let's talk Absolutely. about that so then, because this is what this is today about this quantum energy and it's about the environment. It's about totally, much more too. Totally. Like yeah. if people really understood the slightest, slightest thing, like the, the scent of perfume of someone that reminds you, say, of a school teacher that was mean to you when you were in kindergarten, um, someone that looks like someone. Um, and also uh, a lot of people like say that are hoarders they'll have a tendency to be that way because of the ancestors' experiences. Or you may have had some spiritual experiences in other lifetimes that um, if you believe in, in, in reincarnation, whether you do or you don't, it doesn't really matter. There's enough people on the planet that believe in it that it has an effect on all of us. That's correct. Yes. And so because every single thought we have, is as soon as people get so upset, oh, I don't want people to steal my information or whatever. And uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, as soon as you have a thought, that thought becomes the property 
of the universe, of the multiverse. So someone like you who blows up your knee, which knee was it? My right knee. But you know what happened simultaneously, we found mm -hmm. out? Somebody took a picture of mine and created a Facebook account uh -huh. as me. Oh. And Jessica, all in the same time frame. Now, I didn't know any of that. Jessica's like figuring it out. Okay, I so your know. knees are about support. Okay. It's about you your go. ability to support yourself. There you go. And your knees, your knees are um, like from about the age of like from the knee down to the like at the ankles. If you have a weakness in your ankles, quite often that comes from a lack of support from the, it can be on a physical and non-physical level from your yeah. and, and And we have to understand our parents, we most likely have karma with. Oh, that's so my story. No, I'm not kidding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, remember, I got kicked out at 17. I mean, mm -hmm. support. And there's well, a lot of reasons behind it. For me. Well, uh, you know, my mom committed suicide when I was six. So there's a lot of reasons for it. You had what's coming up is exactly what you just said. And how old were you when your knee went? The first the first knee accident I had. Yeah. Or or this the first time I had. So like this is a this is a lifelong athletic issue with the knee. So just to be clear with you, it actually is not an athletic issue. But I mean, it shows up like that on, on, on an energetic level. It shows up that way. Yeah. It's a fitness issue. OK, and it's coming from the back to the front of the knee. So just, that's right. Yes. You nailed it. Yeah. How do you how do I know that? Because all of a sudden now I've got a baker cyst in the back of my knee and I'm like, a what? Oh, that's pure a baker's anger, pure. a baker cyst. Yeah. And I'm like, take it out. They're OK, like, so we're just going to take it out. This. Let's get it to shrink. Yeah, let's get that to so shrink now. We get, we get in touch with that right now. If, All right, let's do it. Anytime there's a cyst or a sore, mm -hmm. you can listen to the languaging of the person. Um, I have, a, if someone's sore, they're angry. You know, I'm sore with you. <laughs> and that's what it's coming <laughs> up with. And it's on the right 